come this Saturday, November 4th, 2023. The party's electoral college will meet in 277 polling centers to cast their vote to elect our flag bearer for the 2024 general elections. And as part of the process to ensure that we rally the rank and file of the party together and also to bring all the aspirants together, there was a meeting earlier on today which was organized by the, our party's National Council of Elders. At the meeting, we had the President of our Republic, His Excellency Nana Dampe Kufado. We also had the former President, Dona Dekun Kufo, joining us by Zoom. We had members of the Council, National Council of Elders, led by the Chairman of the National Council of Elders. The National Party was led by our able National Chairman, Mr. Stephen Ayesu, in team. We also had members of the Presidential Elections Committee, led by our revered Right Honourable uh, former speaker, Professor Michael Bay and the aspirants and their agents. The essence of the meeting was for all these key important stakeholders to understand that we are one family and no matter the contest, no matter the tension that is associated with internal elections, at the end of the day, come November 4th, it is the MPP that will emerge as the winner. So there was a need for us to have this family meeting for everyone to make a comment where people have issues, to raise issues, and for us together to resolve any issue that exists. And I can say that the meeting was highly successful. And we give thanks to the Almighty God for seeing us through this very important meeting. I must also acknowledge that at the meeting too, we had some officers of our diaspora party also joining us. The long and short of it is that we were able to get the four aspirants contested, namely Honorable Kennedy Japan, His Excellency Dr. Haj Mohammed Mohammed Baumia. Dr. Akutoe Fiyi and Honorable Adenimo all signing an, an undertaking. And in summary, what they signed to, and I'll read to all of you, one is to accept the primary election results, two, to promote peace and cohesion, three, in the event that they don't win, they will not resign from the party. <laughs> Four, to support the winner of the primary. Five, to ensure and enforce mechanism that has been established by the party and also to work within the timelines and duration that has been established by the party from now to the results are declared and to respect the decision by the delegates of our party. And these are the signatures of the aspirants who came for the meeting. The reason also why we have called you for this press conference is as you are aware, election of this magnitude comes with its own challenges. And as a party, together, with our ABLE Presidential Elections Committee, we have decided to engage you so that at least certain gray areas or certain potential controversies that can emanate are addressed at this press conference. Mr. Chairman, it is important that our party constitution, as stipulated 
in Article 1311 gives us the composition of the Electoral College. And it's important that we will reiterate the composition of the Electoral College. Under Article 1311, our constitution states, the party's presidential candidate shall be elected by the following delegates. One, all members of the National Council. Two, all voting members of the National Executive Committee. Three, all voting members of the Regional Executive Committee. Four, all voting members of the Constituency Executive Committee. Five, all electoral area coordinators. Six, the five polling station executive officers in each polling station. Seven, 15 members of the National Council of Elders to be elected from amongst themselves. <clears throat> we also have 15 patrons to be elected from among themselves. All party members of parliament, past national officers, three representatives of each of the special organs of the party, 12 delegates from every external branch, founding members who are signatories to the registration documents of the party at the Electoral Commission, one test score representative from each recognized tertiary institution, all, part, all party card bearing ministers and deputy ministers, and last not least, all MMDCs. So ladies and gentlemen, these are the group that form the electoral college that will be that will elect our presidential candidate come November 4. So in total, we have 204,144 delegates who will cast their votes to elect the party's flag bearer for the 2024 elections. It is important to make this statement. Though unfortunate, our constitution did not capture constituency council of elders and council of patrons. So for the purposes of this presidential election, our constituency council of elders and council of patrons will not partake in the voting process. But however, in the wisdom of the Presidential Elections Committee, the chairperson of the Council of Elder or Elders at the constituency shall be the chairman for the Elections Committee at the constituency. So they will be representing the Presidential Elections Committee together with the chairperson of the Council of Patrons. And the secretary for the committee will be the constituency IT coordinator. For avoidance of any ambiguity, the committee is a representative of the presidential election committee at the constituency. So they are the ones to supervise the elections at the constituency. And no officer of the party, be it constituency officer, national officer, or regional officer, will have any power to interfere in the work of this committee. The police and the electoral commission will end the aspirants will be dealing directly with this committee that I've indicated. There's also an issue about party members who have been suspended whether they can vote or they cannot vote. Again, our constitution is very clear. The chairman, we are indulgent, I will read what the constitution states. In article three, seven of our party constitution, it states, 
A member may be suspended from membership of the party or holding any office in the party pending an inquiry into his or her conduct by a disciplinary committee. Per our party constitution, what this presupposes is that a person can be suspended before appearing before a disciplinary committee or when a disciplinary committee uh, would, have, would have been initiated. But as a rule, and in line with the rule of law, there is what we refer to as presumption of innocence until a matter is determined. So whereby a person has been suspended under this provision and has not gone through this blind committee, and the disciplinary committee has not come out with their verdict and recommended their verdict to the constituency executive, such person will vote. Please, let's take note of it. Where a person has been suspended, proud to appear before the disciplinary committee, or is before the disciplinary committee, but the matter has not come to finality, such person will vote. However, where the person has gone through the disciplinary committee, and the disciplinary committee has come out with its recommendation, and has submitted same to the constituency executive committee, and sanctions or suspension apply to the person, the person shall not be entitled to vote. But however, also, under conditional amnesty, the constituency executive can look at the merit of their case and pardon such people to vote.